friends, thank you very much for being here. I would like to thank you for two reasons. I, I've accepted this invitation, not for my self-promotion, but rather because I consider this uh, invitation also my civic duty. And I guess this uh, concerns uh, all of us. I guess at least those of us who have some civic courage left in uh, these difficult times. I have also decided, I well prepared my speech on identity and postmodernity, but at the very last minute I always start thinking to what extent is this relevant uh, today for this uh, particular audience, or should I possibly talk about issues that are more relevant to, to you, to your area, or to your concerns. In fact, we are isolated here, we are sort of ostracized here, we are ghettoized in a sense, and I keep wondering what is wrong with us, or is something wrong with the system, rather. So I'm thinking and thinking about this, and this constantly reminds me of this old imagery back in communist Yugoslavia, where I grew up, where I lived until I was 25. Back in communist Yugoslavia, for that matter, back, uh, we all had to learn the ropes, you know, this is a slang expression, uh, of survivalism. And what was our survivalism back then, when I was a kid? I still vividly remember when I was an undergraduate student, when I was a high school student. We had to play the game. We were dual person personnel. We were split personalities, so to speak. In other words, when I was with my family back in the, let's say, 60s and 70s at home, when I was talking to my sister or to my father about communism, then of course we cuss like hell, we, we make jokes about communism, about repression, about, uh, about censorship, which was prevailing uh, from Dansk to, to Zagreb to Moscow. And then uh, when we would step outside, when I would go to school, when I would do my just civic obligations, uh, when, I would, uh, when I would go shopping, or for that matter, when I would go to, the, to school, I had to change my personality altogether. So in other words, I had to behave like a schizoid person simply because I had to survive, the family had to survive. This was part and parcel of this homo sovieticus mentality, which I wrote about very extensively in some of my earlier works. And why I'm telling you this now? Because it does, unfortunately, it does also apply to you, to yourself, to ourselves. We live in a purportedly the freest society of all societies ever. We live in a Norway, which according to what our media makers and opinion makers say in your daily, in your, not in your, but in the Norwegian daily, in the, in the daily media and the press, it is the best of all societies. And yet, and yet, here we are. I don't want to say that we are scared. I'm certainly not. I can tell you that. But we have this sense of uh, caution, we have this, we just look over the shoulder a little bit. We wonder, oh, well, is somebody spying upon us? Is somebody going to probably send a snitch? You know what a snitch means, like a, it's a, like a spy or somebody. I frequently, when I go to Germany, for instance, I had a speech for the NPD. You know, I'm sure, sure you're familiar with the NPD, it was a big, a huge speech with lots of people. And then folks, some of my quote-unquote friends were telling me, well, Tom, why did you go there? There were lots of spies. Well, what the heck? So what can I say? I didn't kill anybody. I'm not calling people to violence. So I'm going there because I have friends there. I respect Udo Voigt, so we had a couple of coffees together. We chatted about everything, and I felt that that's my responsibility. I hope you can follow me on this. Now, we are all, not just you here in Norway, but also my friends in... in, in France, I was recently in Orange, where it's a place, it's a nice medieval town near Avignon, and I had a speech on identity and, and, the, and the etymology of the words like nationalism, identity, why, for instance, the French call themselves identitaire, the identitarians, and why, for instance, uh, 
to be a self for, for instance, the English common sense nationalists. You know, so, so I was talking basically, if you wish, about political linguistics. And I also, aside from the topic, I also noticed this type of this sense of looking uh, over the shoulder. Basically, what does that denote, uh, dear friends? I'm sure you can take a guess. It doesn't have to be a wild guess. It tells us that we live in a system which simply is a very soft, very insidious, very subliminal, but nonetheless which makes us think twice. Because after all we have ample evidence that people get arrested, sometimes for very stupid things. If they don't get arrested, they lose their job, or they get defamed, they get pathologized. This is the word that was constructed by my friend Kevin McDonald to pathologize. You know, you have the word pathology, which is a noun, and now there is a verb to pathologize. In other words, the media, and whoever runs the media, be it here, or for that matter in Germany or in France, is trying to pathologize us, to make us sick, to make us look like weirdos, to make us look like crazy people who are simply not, who don't fit into this normal, whatever that may mean, society. And yes, much of my work uh, deals with that in my many, many of my publications, also including my book. But I also need to say over and over again, it's not just them, whoever that them may be, some hidden forces, some conspiratorial forces, some folks who are bad, some liberals, leftists, anarchists, name them, whatever that may mean. I've lost track. I don't know what left means. So I can spend an hour just talking about the meaning of left. But the fact is also, let's keep that in mind, and I learned that uh, I can draw a very funny, very, very significant parallel with the communist mindset back in communist Yugoslavia, or for that matter in Poland, I was born. And this is namely what? Self-censorship. You know what self-censorship means? I just mentioned a while ago that I have friends and colleagues, like I have people who tell, told me a while ago, oh, don't, don't go to the National Front meeting in, in Bradford, don't give a speech over there because every other guy works for the, for the M16. Well, what the heck, but I, I didn't talk about <laughs> drugs, I was just talking normal stuff. You see how folks actually self-castrate themselves, so I'm using this ugly word self, actually they, they self-censor themselves into type of thinking which has absolutely nothing to do with reality. So granted, I understand that there is a, that this society has a criminal code, granted that there are certain principles that they have to abide by, granted the fact also that uh, most universities and colleges in Norway are very politically correct and minority oriented, if you wish, left-leaning oriented, neo-Marxist, Freudian, whatever you have, of course, that is certainly not my cup of tea. But, nonetheless, keep in mind the factor of self-censorship, which is in my, if I can use this other word, in my, in my opinion, it's, it's, it's stupid, to say the least. One must be cautious, but don't be, don't be too paranoid. Of course, you know the expression, even if you are par paranoid, doesn't mean that they're not going to get you, you know, and you know the story. So. But nonetheless, there is a certain thing which I call uh, civic courage and civic responsibility, regardless of my political views. So far, I haven't even uttered any political views. And you would be surprised that <coughs> very often I give speeches where people could easily take me for a Marxist 